In this tutorial, we'll be creating a dialogue system in Godot. We've been using this retro pixel art horror side scroller vibe project in which the player can move left and right, interact with an object, a dialogue box will appear, and the player can cycle through some text. The entire project is available via GitHub, links are in the description. Let's run the project before creating any of the dialogue system. As you can see, we have a player that can move left and right with some simple animation. Let's quickly go over how we're going to create this simple dialogue system. First, we'll create a JSON file. This will store all our text for the scene. JSON data is in name value pairs, so the name is going to be a reference to the object we're interacting with and the value will be a array of strings that we're going to display in the dialog box. Next up, we're going to create a signal bus, or sometimes it's called an event bus. Using this means emitters and receivers of a signal don't need to know each other. They only need to know the signal bus, which is available everywhere by being an auto load. In this small example project, you could definitely get away with not using a signal bus. But if you're creating a bigger game with more complex systems, this would help reduce spaghetti code. We also need to create a dialog area. This is just an area 2D with a collision shape. It will have its own physics layer and will be responsible for emitting the dialog signal to the signal bus. Finally, we need to create the dialog player itself. This will be a canvas layer. It will be the UI for the dialog box. It's responsible for parsing the JSON and turn it into a dictionary object. Also for receiving the dialog signal and all the logic that's needed to cycle through the text. So this is our JSON file. I created it in VS Code, but feel free to use whatever editor you're comfortable with. It's broken into name value pairs, the names related to the object that we're interacting with, and the value is the text we're going to be displaying. The text is a wee bit bleak to keep in tone with the horror project that we've got going on here. We save the file to the JSON folder. It doesn't show up in Godot because I think the Godot file system doc only shows built-in resources, but it is there and we'll be using it again later once we create the dialogue player. Let's create our signal bus. We'll do this by adding a script to our singletons folder and we'll just call this script signal bus. Going into the script, we'll add our signal in. This is called display dialog and it takes in a text key, which will be a reference to an object that we're interacting with. Now we need to add our signal bus as an auto load. We go to project, project settings, in the auto load tab. We go and find our script and then we click add. Now our script is available through our entire game. Before we create the scene for the dialogue area, there's a couple of things we have to do. First, we need to add the physics layer. To do this, we go to Project, Project Settings. In the General tab under Layer Names, 2D Physics will add our dialogue physics layer. We do this so anything on the dialogue physics layer only needs to worry about colliding with other things on that physics layer. Now we need to add an area 2D to our player scene so the player can interact with the dialogue area. We'll call this area 2D dialogue interaction area. We then add a rectangle collision shape that wraps around our player. We set the collision layer to be our newly created dialogue physics layer. As we don't care if the player object is scanning for collisions, we can remove the collision mask. Now let's create the dialogue area scene. This is an area 2D, and we're just going to rename this to dialog area. We add a collision shape, but we're not going to set this until we add the dialog area to our main scene. And we're just going to save this to our world folder. As we don't care what layer the dialog area lives on, but we do care what collisions it scans for, we only need to select the dialog physics layer for the collision mask. Let's create a script and remove the template script. Add two variables, one for the dialog key that we will set in the editor. This will be the likes of door, pictures or bookcase from our JSON file. And also a flag to say if the player has entered the area or not. We will use the input event, check if the area is active and if the player has pressed the spacebar. If this is true, we emit the display dialog signal along with our dialog key. 
Next, we need to connect the area entered and the area exited to our script and set the area active flag accordingly. When the dialog box appears, we are going to pause the scene tree, but we still want to register input from the dialog area, so we're going to need to set the pause mode to process. Back in our world scene, we're going to add an instance of our dialog area, which is going to be renamed to dialog area door. Let's move the dialog area roughly where the door is. Make the children editable for instance of the dialog area and add a rectangle collision shape roughly covering the door. Then we just need to set the dialog key, in this case it will be door in the editor. Now we repeat this process two more times for the pictures and bookcase. Lastly we need to create a scene for the dialog player. This will be a canvas layer, which we will name Dialog Player and save to the UI folder. Now we add a texture rec called Background and a label called Text Label. After a bit of tweaking of stuff like the position, the background image and the text for the label, it should look like this. The only real things of note here is the label has an auto wrap to avoid text going beyond the background image and there is a custom font used that will be in the finished project and also it's linked in the description. Let's reset our demo text and set the pause mode to process as we want the dialogue player to continue functioning when we pause the scene tree. Let's add a script to the dialogue player and add some variables. Scene text file is a reference to our JSON file that we will set in the editor. Scene text is our dictionary object of all the text needed for the scene. Selected text is an array of text currently being used by the dialogue player. In progress is a flag used to determine if the dialogue player is still displaying text. And finally, we have some references to our UI. Next up, we add some things to our ready function. So we set the background visible to false as we don't want it to be displayed when we load the game. We need to load the text for the scene and finally connect our signal bus display dialog signal. This will in turn call the function on display dialog. Now we need to load the scene text. We do this by reading the JSON as a file and returning the parse JSON as text. Let's now create the on display dialog function, which will take our text key as a parameter. If the dialog player is already in progress, then we will attempt to display the next line of text. Otherwise, we will pause the scene tree, show the background, set the progress flag, set the selected text, and finally show the text in the dialog box. Note that we use duplicate to get a copy of the array, so this can be modified independently without editing the original. Now we can create the show text the next line functionality. Show text sets the text of the label by using pop front, which removes and returns the first element of the array. Next line checks if any elements are left in selected text. If this is true, it calls the show text function. Otherwise, it will call the finish function. Finally, in our finish function, we reset our text the background visibility, our progress flag, and we unpause the scene tree. Back at our world scene, we add in our dialogue player. Then we select our JSON file for the scene. And that is it. Now running our project, we can see the player can interact with all the objects using the spacebar. This could also be easily used for the likes of NPCs rather than just environmental objects. 
If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe for more Godot stuff and have a fabulous day.